why it started from a vision um, that I had one day when I was reading the scriptures about Mary and Martha, two well-known characters in the Bible. Martha um, was the one who was always running about trying to serve Jesus. Mary was the one who chose to sit at Jesus' feet. And I always thought that Martha had a bad rap, really, because she was the one who Jesus said, look, you know, stop rushing about so much. Mary, your sister's chosen the better part. And I feel that that could be translated into the, today. We rush around, we do so many things. Um, but sometimes we just need to stop. And an oasis for me is a place where people can stop and drink and be refreshed. What better place than Martha's Oasis, a place where busy women who struggle and juggle can stop and rest a while and learn something about themselves and more importantly about the love of God. Oh Lord, we're just here, we just thank you Lord that we've uh, come together in this way right Lord, in, right in the middle of Ladywood. Father we just thank you for your graciousness and your goodness Lord and we've got so many ideas that are coming out of things that we want to do to reach this community. I started some years ago um, as I start to think about where my place was and how I would, could best serve the Lord. And I've always had a heart for women, uh, had a heart for women's issues, um, knowing that women are the heart of the family. And it was in prayer one day that the Lord really showed that, yeah, you can do something. Mm -hmm. They get loads of women that come into GP surgeries. Mm -hmm. There's yeah. nothing wrong with them. It's just that they want to talk. Yeah. Mm -hmm. like, yeah it's true. There's nothing wrong. And it's it just mimics yeah. um, symptoms of yeah. headache. Yes. I'm involved with Martha's Oasis, so we can see how the church can be involved within the community, that we don't have walls within ourselves, but that we can reach out into the community to women who are in need. Do you think we miss it sometimes when we're church and we all come so far away and we miss the community? Yeah, sometimes. absolutely. No, but that's what Sheila was talking about as well, the fact that we live in one place and we go to church in yeah. another, yeah. you know, and whereas probably have more impact if we're working and going to church in the yeah. same area and, and you build up that sense of community. Absolutely. Church shouldn't be a remote thing, should it? But to me, look at the people out on the streets. It's about taking the love of God outside of a building, um, showing people in the community, community, showing women that we take the love of Christ with us. It's not just in a building, it's within us. God is challenging us uh, to love our neighbours, to love women of this community um, and to reach out to those who are really in need. It is what Jesus did. We, we're supposed to be following what Jesus did and if we look at how Jesus um, lived, he reached out to the community. He, his, most of his life we see Jesus moving out reaching out to people all the time. Martha's Oasis offers a way that we can actually start to befriend women. We can start to be a friend that's not just a friend who's a fair weather friend, but somebody who's going to be there who walks through the difficult times, walks through the sad times as well as the happy times. We have met regularly here in church to, I suppose, to define what Martha's Oasis is about. Um, you heard Olivia saying earlier about the vision that she had, and now it was about making that a reality. Update about where we are. You know that our, our biggest prayer that we've been asking for, following our away day as well, mm -hmm. is asking for that house. Yeah. It, but you're just saying, Lord, just, just release that. Mm -hmm. we, we just want a house now. Mm -hmm. And we, we know that that's the way that we've got to go. Um, prayer walking the other day, and we saw a couple of properties. We're praying okay. in the yeah. Well, we're, we're praying. We just pray that God will give us this thing. Yeah. Now I don't know how that provision is going to come, mm. but we're just praying for that. Mm. Mm. We just want it to be known as somewhere that people can come, mm. just sit down, chill out. Mm. You know what? God knows what's God best, knows. and I just think. This is really exciting. We think we got our premises in Ladywood at last. It's right in the heart of Ladywood. It's a wide open space, triple frontage of a shop, office space at the back, all sorts of things that we can do with it. We can divide it off. We can have workshops there. We can have some counselling space. We can have space to sell things. We can have coffee shop in there. It's a place that people are used to dropping by already and 
they've already been coming by and asking this lady what's happening to the premises and what, what it's going to be used for. This was definitely the community shop. Agony aunt of Ladywood I was. <laughs> <laughs> It is quite a mix. It mostly seems to be white and African-Caribbean, but there are a lot of asylum seekers that are housed in the flats. It's desperate around here, especially for women. I know, that was, one of, that was a big... There's a lot of women that are not coping because they haven't got the support that they need. And I think um, a place like this, from what I've heard, sounds great. <laughs> great. <laughs> And this, have you seen this office over here? Have we put yeah. In that? Yeah, I was just thinking we could buy some of that. It's really strange. I've not experienced nothing like this before. <laughs> and, you know, it's another strange thing is Jill called me and um, I've got the keys to the shop in my hand because I was clearing out <laughs> yeah. my yeah. bag. And she says, can you speak to Olivia? It's really strange. I was clearing my bag out and I've got the keys in my hand and she said that she's interested in the shop and I thought oh no I'm, I'm you know I'm oh. going to get rid of the shop because the longer I leave it's more debts yeah. that I'm going to mm -hmm. have to pay but for some reason I rang yeah. and for some reason I just oh I don't know it's weird <laughs> <laughs> It's really exciting, it's what we've been wanting, but now it's actually happening, it feels such a big thing, it's almost scary, but we know we've got God on our side, and if it happens, it's what God wants to happen. Um, we've been laying the groundwork now for a year, maybe even longer, and hopefully we're ready for this, but it's got to be a God thing, it's not going to be just us, because it's going to be so big. Once I shared the vision, with Pastor Nigel. He was really supportive and said that the church would be behind us in reaching out. To him, this is more meaningful than any evangelistic campaign, any short-term meeting that you, that you have about evangelism, because this is real. Mm -hmm. We're seeking to do real things. Letting our light shine out to others, people will see the love of God and respond to that treating women with respect, treating with them, women with compassion um, within a society where maybe they don't get that from the wider society. Um, I suppose as its name implies, Martha's Oasis is somewhere where they can come and they can feel safe and they can feel warm and they know that they don't have to hide anything when they're with us. From church what we would like probably first and foremost is prayers. I think if we're going along to build, and when we're talking about building waste places, we're talking about prayer, um, breaking down some of those obstacles, going before us really, the Spirit of God going before us, and we, that's what we want. And I think on top of that as well, we need volunteers, people who will come out with us to prayer walk with us, or just to contribute in an ad hoc manner as they did for the International Ladies' Day, and for any other way that they can. She